hey everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video so excited to be here thank you so much for following the channel thank you so much for consistently being a part of the space with me jk gatleo malela thank you so much for being here if you do enjoy the content please as always do follow and support the content like the video subscribe to the channel whatever it is that you can do it's literally free it does not cost you anything to like or to subscribe. Please do consider doing so. And also I do have a channel membership space where there are a ton of videos on there if you want extra bonus content sweetie if you also do want to support the channel you can throw in a super thanks over there somewhere down below here where you can just throw in a couple of dollars rands Rondies for your sister so that I can continue creating more content on this platform. So thank you very much for being here. Let us get into this video. I'm really excited to film this video because I think it's the beginning of a new year. We're still in the first quarter of the year and I really want to churn out videos that are going to help when it comes to navigating the rest of the year. And one of them is the I'm okay with me series. So if you are not familiar with the series and you've just recently started following the channel, I do have a series called the I'm okay with me series. And it's purely because of the fact that I'm an introvert and we live in a largely extroverted and ambiverted society. So a lot of the time we get misunderstood. Like people kind of seem to think that we either are nonchalant or we stand offish or this, that, and the other. And I want to create this video series so that you can understand introverts a little bit better but also to help introverts in social settings to help introverts when they're around friends when they're in the professional space which is what we're going to be talking about today so this is the purpose of this series altogether so if you're an introvert you're gonna love the series but if you're not an introvert it might help you understand your introverted counterparts much better better so the reason why i wanted to do this video particularly is because a lot of us are going back to work and we're going back to school where we're going to find ourselves in professional and semi-professional or academic situations right where we're going to be forced to be strict no playing around we're doing group projects right we're doing work team projects all of this and we are engaging on a professional or academic level with the people that are around us so it's not social it's not cash cash but you also want to be able to be in a space where you can communicate yourself a little bit better but also pre preserve yourself a little bit more especially if you're an introvert so in this particular video i'm going to help you know or exercise some things that might make your professional or academic space a little bit easier to handle especially if you're an introvert and if you're extroverted this might also help you understand how your introverted counterparts or colleagues work so that you don't misunderstand them they just might work a little bit differently to you and that's okay so if you're ready let's get started with the first first point right. so if you are an introvert this is really really important especially when you're in the work or academic space so when you're in a professional setting and you're at work and maybe you have to be into in the office do consider finding pockets of alone time now i know when we go to the office it's like literally nine hour days you get to work at eight you knock off at four or five sometimes six seven eight nine for some people dependent on the industry you're working in and the job that you have some people just don't even sleep like there's creatives like us we just what what is sleep <laughs> we sleep when we date you know what i'm saying but that's not the point the point is if you find yourself in a situation where you are at work all day you need to try and find pockets of alone time the reason why this is so so important is because our batteries as introverts our social batteries get drained very very quickly so it's important to find pockets of alone time where you can re-energize where you can recollect where you can you know just have moments of silence where you can build up that social battery a little bit like boop, 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 right you maybe you're at that point where you just like right but you need to find moments of alone time where you can spend some time by yourself where you can do the things that 
you know re-energize your battery if that be reading or maybe just spending time outside you know getting in some fresh air getting in some sunlight maybe it's also just sitting in your car for maybe five ten minutes if you're at work and you uh, have the ability to do to you have a car and you drive you go into the car and you just sit there maybe you listen to your favorite tunes that really relax you or maybe you just choose to um spend some time alone this really really helps because it re-energizes you when you get back to the workspace when you get back to the hustle and bustle the humdrum of the day you find yourself feeling a lot more better a lot more re-energized you're stronger um, and it also just opens up your mind a little bit more but definitely try to find pockets of alone time it is so so important it helps re-energize you it helps you collect your thoughts it helps reinvent you for the day ahead um, it's really important because our social batteries get drained so fast whether we're in a professional setting or a social setting we tend to just blah, we slump in a little bit and when we slump in a little bit we really just don't want to do anything so it's important to find those pockets of alone time even if you go to the bathroom maybe you're going to the bathroom maybe you're just taking a walk to the bathroom instead of um, going straight back to your desk after that, maybe just pop into the kitchen, make yourself a cup of tea, drink some water, just take some breathing exercises, do a little bit of deep breathing and all of that. It really does help and it really does go a long way. So try that. Very important, especially in work and professional and academic ses settings, learn to create boundaries this is something that i talk about a lot on my life by design instagram tiktok pages learn to create work boundaries learn to create colleagues academic um, group boundaries all of this people need to understand how you work people need to understand that a no is a no if you cannot do that work right now because you're currently focusing on something else that you've been mandated to do and your deliverable times your turnaround times and all of that for all those deliver deliverables i can never say that word deliverables needs to happen very quickly so if your colleague comes to you and says listen can you just look at this report real quick and tell me if i went wrong somewhere and all of this meanwhile you know at the end of the day your manager wants this particular report or you need to give feedback on this thing by the end of the day you can say no if you are supposed to just be assisting they want you to just have a quick look over you tell them that listen i'm currently busy on something else at the moment give me a solid about an hour or two and then let's let's have a look at it during lunch let's have a look at it during you know just just in the first 10 minutes of lunch let's have a look at it and then we'll see um i'll give you my my two cents on it but it's really important to create boundaries because a lot of the time as introverts our boundaries tend to get stepped on quite a lot because people don't understand us you know it's like so weird like why is she like that okay, if you are not creating boundaries you are putting in jeopardy your work and what you need to deliver to your manager or to your boss or whatever and the quality of that work because if you're so insistent on helping everybody else not creating the work boundaries everybody's just coming in dropping things off at your desk doing this show me please look at this show me please look at this da, 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 da. let's not forget at work another boundary i say show me i say show me they are your colleague they are your group partner. If you're in an academic setting at school and you're doing a group project, in this particular moment, we are working. It's a professional setting. So make sure that you create those boundaries that people mustn't overstep. Explain to them how you work. Explain that, you know what? <clears throat> I can do this, but I can't really do it right now. Or explain to someone that I'm going to look at this folder. I'm going to look at this, um, the, these numbers that you sent to me, but I'm not going to look at them right now. So if you want to maybe ask someone else, or maybe if you want to, if you understand the fact that I'm not going to give it to you by the end of the day, I'm not going to give you a word by the end of the day, then that's fine. You can put it over there. But if they don't, then they don't. All right. Next thing is definitely try and find someone who is as introverted as you especially when you're in a work academic professional space let me explain why this will help because when you find someone who 
is more like you or has similar qualities and characteristics to you, it's very easy for them to understand how you work or very easy for you to communicate with them in such a way that will help calm you they might be also able to advise you in such a way where you'll be able to uh, maybe do things slightly differently but within your personality within your um, operation of things how you work things out an introvert will probably understand the most outside of other people so it's really important especially if you can just get one one or two introverts that maybe you can just be a little bit more friendly with they will understand how you work especially if they are in your team they will understand how you work and will be able to vouch for you in instances where you might not be able to vouch for yourself so it's really important especially even during lunchtime or whatever you can have that person there that you can communicate with them and say you know what I want to do this but I don't know how to approach this can you maybe advise how I can go and speak to my manager about this can you what 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 and you will be surprised at how helpful it can be they will understand a lot of what you are going through especially in that professional setting also at school as well works pretty much the same way try to align yourself if you're doing group work try to align yourself with somebody who you know will be um understanding and will comprehend how you work and how you approach certain tasks, how you approach certain conversations. They will understand if you do not want to be present at the group meeting and they might vouch for you. They'll be like, nah, she can't make it today. And maybe it's just because you your social anxiety it's capped, capped, right? So you don't want to be present at the time. In, and if you don't have to be there, then you don't have to be there. That leads me to my next point, actually. If your presence is not required at the meeting, absolutely not required, then do not attend it. You don't have to attend meetings, group meetings, teams meetings, if you are, your presence is not required. If they do not need you to switch your vid, webcam on, a lot of the time they'll need you to switch it on if you're going to be speaking, right? Unless it's a meeting where everybody got to switch their web, webcam on. But often, most meetings, you don't even need to switch your webcam on. That is fantastic. You just keep it off, you mute, and you listen. And you do your work while the meeting is happening. If you are not required to be at the meeting, do not attend the meeting. It's not going to do anything for your, you know, your, your social standing or your professional standing. Now your manager's not going to like you because you didn't come to the meeting. That's not how it works. In professional settings do the work that's all that's required of you you know unless you are facilitating that meeting unless you are speaking in that meeting unless you know that you will be addressed your manager's gonna say um detail so now tell me how are those financials looking about da, da, da. then you have to respond right tell me what's the status of that project have we done up to whatever whatever then you're going to need to respond. So to be in the meeting, yes, you have to be in the meeting. But do you have to speak what what if you don't have to don't conserve as much energy as you can stay away from it if you don't have to be there um, it's also great with how COVID has worked and this is another point a really important point I think that'll go a long way with how COVID has worked with a lot of office professional settings some people work um, hybrid right they hybrid work so they go into the office a couple of days they don't go into the office the remainder of the other days it's just hybrid working right so what you can do is capitalize on that if you don't have to go into the office don't go into the office don't go into the office and you can actually speak to your manager even on a day where you need or they want you to come into the office like statistically most of us are going to come in on a friday if if you really just really struggle with being around people you'll be surprised if you can speak to your manager and say listen can i come in maybe two three fridays a month instead of 
all the Fridays, unless you've got meetings and all of that. Speak to them. You can work around certain things in such a way that it'll make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Hybrid work settings are fantastic. And I think they work great for introverts because you don't have to be there. Same with group work and all of that. You don't have to physically be there. Guys, can I dial in? Right? So if your group is working, and they're working on a really big project assignment, whatever. Gents, can I dial in? Can one of you guys just call me? I mean, you're on campus, you've got Wi-Fi. Can one of you guys just call me? I am on the line. I am listening, I am there, I am present, just not physically in my body form. That's all. Hybrid, hybrid work settings are, I think, the blessing that introverts needed, really, since COVID, you know, since COVID. Definitely the blessing that introverts needed. Okay. Capitalize on your strengths as an introvert when you are working. These will go an absolutely long, long way. Introverts tend to work better when they work alone. So one of the things is like, listen, if call a meeting, say that, listen, this is how I do the things, what, what, about this, that, and the other, and then just work alone. You capitalize better if you can work alone. So if you're in a space where um, you have the opportunity to work alone, then capitalize on that. Push yourself as much as you can. The self-drive is naturally there as an introvert when you're working alone, but push yourself even harder to push as much as you can, especially when you're working alone. Introverts are really good at listening as well. So when you listen, pick up on all the little key pointers that other people probably wouldn't pick up on and capitalize on that. So whatever it is that your boss then said that might be a small little nugget, but might go a long way to helping you achieve the desired outcome with your project, then capitalize on that. So listen hard, work alone if you have to. Take the little moments and pockets of alone time where you can just be away from your team. If you are in a meeting setting and you're sitting in a boardroom and there's 10 of you, just try and take the... The corner that's least where everybody sits, sit on the other end of it. If it'll make you feel more comfortable, sit on the other end of it as opposed to sitting in between a bunch of people that might uh, suffocate you and make you feel like, I'm a little bit, ugh, they're doing too much, I need them far away from me, I need them far away from me, then do that. Do whatever it takes for you to work at your optimum, for you to bring out the best in terms of the work that you do um, and produce your best work, essentially. So really, really important to capitalize on your strengths in terms of your listening skills, in terms of working alone and harnessing that your self-drive when you are, I'm not saying that the other uh, extroverts and ambiverts don't have self-drive. I'm talking to introverts right now. We do have that self-drive, but only when the conditions around us in our environment are conducive. And if they are, we're gonna produce our best work yet. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say in this video. I don't want to make all my videos long, so this one is not going to be long, but these are some of the key things that you can do, especially when you are in a work academic or professional setting that can help you navigate through your day, that can help people in those settings understand you and how you work a little bit better. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like. Thumbs up, please. Subscribe to the channel. Also join the membership space if you feel so kindly and keen to do so. There's a lot more content on there as well. But uh, if you can't do that, throw in a little thanks. And I appreciate you so much. As I always say, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Until the next one, I'm going to go and I'll see you very, very, very soon. Until the next one, sayonara.